Greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Del Puckett here and in this video, I, we, us, we are going to build a gold top. Three strings cigar box guitar using this cigar box. So I have decided I'm going to build it using a 23 inch scale fretboard. So here's my template. And this is one of those Doug Fur sticks that I found while I was riding my bicycle. So this will be the neck and the fretboard will be a Lowe's fretboard. So first things first, I'm gonna notch out the headstock, cut the frets on the fretboard, and then glue the fretboard so that it can start gluing, so that the glue can start drying. And then I'll cut the heel and then I'll start getting this box prepared. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I just sliced the fret slots into the fretboard using the Mighty Might table saw in the jig and the template. So now I'm going to glue, glue this to this neck and I already cut out the headstock part. So I'm gonna glue that now and let the glue dry. Actually, before I glue this thing here, I wanted to mark where I need to notch this thing for the box to fit, okay? So I'm gonna do that now before I glue it. So I notched it right here, and I also cut it off right here so that it would fit perfectly. So now I can just glue this on and I think I'll also glue the heel on and kill two birds with one stone. And just like that, we are all glued up. And I put that ruler on the top so that the clamps don't dig into the fretboard. And then once this glue dries, then I will begin to carve and shape the fretboard and then I'll cut it out for the piezo. I do have the back angle already incorporated into here. So now it's just uh, hurry up and wait and let the glue dry. But while I'm, while I'm waiting for the glue to dry, I will pre start preparing the box. Next, I'm going to drill the hole and install the jack. I think I'm gonna do go, I'm gonna go for two large sound holes and then also glue the internal blocks to screw this top down here. Notice how this edge here covers, covers this part here and it's not on the inside, like the Arturo Fuentes, this is on the inside and this has got a big lip. So that's kind of a unique little design feature with this box here, but isn't that awesome? Gold top, woohoo! For the sound hole symmetry, I get one of these clear, and you can just make one of these, but um, I like it because it's got the ruler marks on either side, so I can set, use this to find the center. And then I just mark them out, the center, so that it's equal. And then I get one of these guys here, which is a, a hole drill. You gotta be real, real careful with these things because these things are sharp. Oh my gosh. And then it's just a matter of some thick top. Hello. Hello. All right, check this out. One thing I do suggest though, is since these are gold, um, I'm gonna save them because you know, these are Bitcoins. Uh -huh, get it, Bitcoins. All right, call in the air, heads I win, tails you lose. 
because I win. Another thing I always do while I'm waiting for the glue to dry, buying myself some time, is I get one of these round files. You can get any, anything you want, sandpaper or, or whatnot. And then I just take off the inside edge of these things. Just to create a bevel. Of course, then I'll sand it smooth. But this, this just makes it look more deliberate and more intentional. More like a sound hole. I'll do that for both the uh, the inside and the outside. See all that little, that little lip of paper? I just do this and it gets, ri gets rid of it. And this is awkward because I'm holding it for the camera, but... Um, that way it just it just looks cleaner that's all next I drilled out the, the hole for the potentiometer and then installed it again I'm just waiting for the glue to dry I also got the four corners reinforced as well so the glue is drying here as well While I'm still waiting for the glue to dry, it's been about an hour maybe, I think what I can do is I can notch the box and I can also solder up my piezo wires and what else? Heat up the glue gun. Anything I can do to buy myself a little bit more time to let this dry just a little bit more. Got the notch complete. So now I am ready to take off the clamps and what I'm going to do now is route these edges and then start filing and curving the fretboard. You can see the rounded edges from the, the router and then I just get a file and then just go to town. After the file, just sand it and sand it. I start off with uh, coarse grit sandpaper and then I work up to finer and finer and finer. And then I go back and I feel it and it's like I look for, feel for bumps, for ridges. And uh, of course I look at it for visuals, for uh, any kind of file marks or sand marks. And then once it's all perfected, then we move to the next step. And for this example, the next step is going to be fretting. So I've got three of these one foot pieces of, this is medium nickel fret wire and one little piece of jumbo. So I'll use the jumbo fret for the zero fret. And I also have my beveled. They're flat on this side and beveled on this side. And then this is what I use to get smooth edge cuts. Next is a very, 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 very important step. See these little edges that are sticking out here? It's called fret spike. And they're sharp and very annoying. So I use this tool right here. That is the grinding wheel. And I grind off these edges. And then, um, and then I will file them and sand them smooth. So that's what I'm going to do next.
And then once all these fret spikes have been grinded down, what I like to do is get this uh, belt sander. And I kind of tilted it like about maybe a little bit, about a 45 degree angle. And that way the edges are, are uniform on both sides up and down. All right, this next step, in my opinion, is one of the most important. These little fret files. Um, you can just make your own. And this, like for this one right here, for example, this side here is smooth, right? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll go like that so you can hear it. See how it's smooth? But this side here has the teeth on it. So I have a smooth side and a tooth side. And they actually make them. This one here is called Fret Guru. And this one here is the same thing. It's got grit on one side and then it's smooth on the other side. Grit on one side and it's smooth on the other side. And so what I do is I take the side that's smooth and set it on the fretboard right next to the fret at about a 45 degree angle to the fret. So that, so that the, the grit side is actually hitting the fret, okay? And then with one move, I pull and round over the top. And I'm doing it slow, slow motion. Again, one, one movement, I, it's just, I just pull and rotate over the top crown of the fret. Now this is horrible because I'm holding it up for the camera. And I'll show you exactly how I do it by moving the camera down. So this is the way I do it. Now, now I, I have a rule for myself and the rule is what I do for one fret, I do for all of them. I don't just sit there on one fret and then get it perfect and then go to the next fret and get it perfect. What I'll do is I'll do one move for each fret and that way each fret is consistent. So this is what I do is I put the smooth side down, the grit side toward the fret, and then roll it over. Next fret, next fret, next, next. And if you look close, you can see the uh, bevel, there's like a little bevel that now on, on the crown of each, of each of these frets. And it's only on this side and on the top. Now I'm going to do the same thing on here, but now I'm going to push and go over the top. Now, now this one here I can pull or push because it's just got grit on it. This is not like a file. If it's a file, you might have to either pull or push depending on the, on the, the file. This, my index finger here on my left hand is like a guard. It prevents the, the thing from slipping off and actually gouging the fret board. So now I got the, the one side, I turn it over and I do the same thing for the other side of the frets.
and then I feel it. And you can you can feel if if there's anything that's that's miss or not exactly right, you'll feel it right off the bat. Ah, I can feel a little piece right there. And upon inspection, I can see that I need to grind that guy down just a little bit more. Listen, you can even hear it. We're almost done with the neck. This is what they call the home stretch. Now I get the sandpaper. This is 320 grit, and I just polish the ends of here. And I like to polish them so that they're mirror mirror smooth. So when I'm looking at it, it's like they're like they got like a polished surface. And you can just tell just by looking at it when it when you get it right. The other thing I want to point out here is that I did drill this guy out for the embedded piezo and I also notched this guy out from here to here so that the top of the cigar box is not touching the wood here. So we're just about ready. Moving on you notice I already cut the or drilled the holes for the tuners and I just matched the drill bit to the shaft of the The width of the of the tuner there, so that's done. The other thing I wanted to point out here that I forgot to mention here is see this little notch right there from from this hole, and that is just done with the Dremel, and that is so that the wires that go to the piezo can go because I'm going to have this thing flat embedded. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, next we're going to embed this piezo in hot glue. So the first thing I do is solder leads onto it. The ground is the outer side and the hot is the inside. One thing I forgot to mention, I did already install the blocks in here. These are the, the mounting blocks. And it is worthy to note that this one is thinner and the back one is just a little bit thicker, about um, maybe about a quarter of an inch. And that is to accommodate for the thinness here and the thickness here for the back angle. So this is perfectly the right height so that when this is closed, there is very, very, very subtle movement up and down in here. So it's nice and tight in here. So what I do is I take hot glue and I'll put a little bit of a bead inside my Fosner bit hole. And then I'll take my piezo and I will strategically place it in there and I will run my little wires through my little hole. Now I'm going to center this guy up. I don't want it to be too far on either side. I want it to be directly in the center of the hole. And then making sure that my wires are in my little trough. I don't know if you can see that. That's what it looks like up close. And then it just takes about a minute for this hot glue to dry. Now, in the meantime, this is what I like to do. Get some scissors and get yourself some paper. I usually use expired sandpaper, but you can use anything you want. I'm just now, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this to be the exact right size to cover the piezo. Okay, so now, now this is where you have to use guesstimation. Now I'm going to guesstimate how much hot glue I need in here. And if you get too much, it's okay because you can always just cut it off later. So I'm guessing that that's about enough right there to fill up the hole. And then while it's hot, I place my paper over it, kind of push it down just a little bit. Not too much. 
And here's the key. Now I'm going to shut, make sure all your wires are out of the way so that you get a perfect shut. When you shut this thing down, you hold it in place. You should be able to feel the heat come through here. Yep, I can feel that heat coming through right there. So that tells me I got a good seal. And now you just wait, wait for about a good minute. And this is what it looks like. Ta-da! And now we're ready to solder these wires up to the potentiometer. After much deliberation, I decided to go with the dark walnut stain to complement this gold box. So, let's go to staining. Got my gloves. Check this out. Watch how far that thing stretches. So, um, we are ready to apply our stain. And this is where the miracle transformation happens. Now I'm just going to be generous and smear it all over the place and then I'll go back and rub it off. Or not. I'm going to be careful not to make a mess with this stuff. They call it stain for a reason. Make sure you're wearing old clothes. Make sure you're wearing gloves. Make sure you have a surface that you don't mind getting dirty in case you spill. Why? Because you will spill. That's just part of the name of the game. Oh yeah, my gosh. Excellent choice. Excellent choice. I love the I love the, the look of walnut. A lot of times what I'll do is while it's still drying, I'll take the um, just a paper towel or maybe some steel wool and start rubbing it off especially if I want it to be a little bit lighter. And in this case here, I want that fretboard to pop out just a little bit so it's not entirely darkened. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll try some steel wool just to experiment. Oh, right. I have no idea what this is gonna do. Let's see here. Ah, I actually like that. Yeah, that really makes the letters and the markings on the fretboard pop out. And then I'll, I'll leave the rest of it, the back, dark. See, good thing I was wearing gloves, right? And then what I like to do for consistency is stain this little part, side part here on both sides. And that's so that when you're looking in the sound holes, that the wood is the same color on the inside of the box as it is on the outside of the box. It's just for consistency, that's all. All right, we are done soldering. And the ground out of the piezo goes to the ground wire here. The hot from the piezo comes up to the input of the potentiometer. The output of the potentiometer goes to the jack. And then also the ground from the potentiometer goes to the jack. Real simple circuit. On the piezos, you do not need to ground the bridge. I always recommend double checking before you button it up just to make sure everything is working. So the volume control works. Perfectly, yay. Next we do wire tie. That's just to keep everything nice and neat. 
and then button it up. Next, I added these gold corners and the screw here goes right into those mounting blocks. Then I installed the golden string catch here. So all I need to do now is put the volume control on, build a saddle, put the tuners in, put the strings on, and then. And since this is a three stringer, I've got three strings. I've got the 44 gauge, the 34 gauge, and the 26 gauge. And what I do is I just get a little nail and string these ball ends through the nail. And then string these bad boys through the hinge. That's what that looks like. So now we'll string them up. Thank God somebody invented one of these things here, which is just a string tuner with one of these connectors that'll fit right into your power drill. And the strings are on just like that. Now while these strings are stretching, and they are stretching, so however you want to stretch your strings, doesn't matter, but you got to stretch your strings. Next what I'm doing is I'm putting these golden screws, these things are worth their weight in gold. So what I do is I just get a little pokey pokey and I poke it right where I want it and then give it a little, little love tap. And since this is the double dot here, I'll do two of them and then get a little tiny little drill, just enough to get it started. And then what I do is I get the drill bit that is the, the size of the head. So I match up the size of the head of the screw with the, with the drill. And then I go reverse the, the backwards direction. So I'm spinning backwards. I'm not drilling into the wood. I'm actually reverse spinning. And I'm creating two little holes that are about the size of the screw head so that when the screw gets screwed in that the head actually embeds so it's like flat on the top you can't feel it it's in there now you ask yourself why do you use those little golden screws um, the answer is because, um, because of the, the, these little things have like the little Phillips head, heads on them. So what they do is they kind of sparkle and bling and they kind of catch the light. So if you're, if you're operating in a dim, dimly lit um, situation, these things here really do catch the light and like you can really see them from from a long ways away with or without your reading glasses which is kind of nice for for us guys with are uh, visually challenged the final stage is just setting up this saddle so I set it up two ways number one I'm sanding it down on the under underside of it to lower the action so that the string height is um, desirable for me so I like a medium action not not so high that it's difficult to play, not so low that it's buzzing out, but just high enough where I can play with fingers and with a slide. That's the first thing. The second thing is I'm positioning this thing and angling it back and forth so that whatever note I'm tuned to, in this case here it's EBE, -E, that it's also EBE -E at the 12th fret. 
So I tune it up for E, and then I put my finger here and I check with the tuner, is it still E? If it's not, then I adjust this thing here, back and forth, so that they're both they're both tuned at the open and at the 12th fret the same. So it's E, B, E also up here. Then once I'm happy with that, and I know that the strings are done stretching, then it's time to... mention that I wanted to mention here is that I do have the golden eyelets and the golden bolt to hold down these golden strings and I also have the golden hook on the top and one last thing to point out here is this is called the gold top um, and the tuner that's on the top here is golden look at that so this is um, a gold top in many regards. Look how it's shiny right there. It's got the bling. Oh, oh yeah, and last but not least, notice how I have the, the input jack there. Um, or the output jack, whatever you want to call it. Whatever jack you want to call it. Um, I tried to line it up. It's in the center up and down wise, but I also wanted to put it in that little hole right there. So. It's my gold top. If you want to hear what this thing really sounds like, check out the next video. All right, see you in the next one. I almost forgot to trim these things.